to make this small thermostat mock up, it took me two minutes, no wires, and not a single line of programming. Hey guys, it took me a while to actually talk more about M5 Stack Core 2. And it's not because I didn't like it, it's just I've been swamped with so many cool things that it's been on the shelf for quite some time. But recently I've started to play with it and I'm absolutely having a great time. It's not a secret that I really like M5 Stack devices because, well, you always can find something for yourself. Whether you're looking for a camera with AI processing that will do everything for you, by the way, the video is there, or maybe something that has e-ink display and a touchscreen like M-Paper, I've also reviewed it in the past, and a couple of other M5 stack devices. But also what I did in the past was a review of the M5 stack core device, and to be precise, the Fire Development Kit. Now, Core 2 brings one important feature to the table, a touchscreen interface, and for the most part, it's a very similar device to the previous Core generation. Apart from touch interface, the Core 2 actually brings a new display. It is still the same resolution, so it's 240 by 320, but it is much brighter because this time around it is an ISP LCD display. It's actually quite bright comparing to the Fire display. And it's touchscreen, so the three physical buttons has been replaced with capacitive touch buttons instead, and they work pretty well. Other than that, the changes are minimal. Inside you'll still find a very familiar to your ESP32 uh, microcontroller, which comes with Bluetooth, a Wi-Fi in 2.4 GHz range, so you'll be able to take advantage of that. On the component list, there are some changes in terms of component numbers, but for the most part, the functionality inside is very similar. Inside, you'll find a 1 watt speaker, microphone, 6 axis accelerometer, real time clock if you want to take the battery lasting much longer. The battery itself, obviously, it is 390 milliamps, and also a vibration motor. On the outside, a familiar interface. There is a Type-C connector and a Groove connector which supports for I2C and UART. If you need more storage, microSD card support is included with cards supported up to 16 megabytes. Now, if that's not enough, you can uncover a tab at the back and expose 30 pin GPIO header so you could connect pretty much anything you want. Since this is M5 stack core device, it will also be compatible with all stack modules, and there is a lot of different modules on M5 stack store. Even the Fire Development Kit, which was basically designed for the previous generation, works. All I had to do is just uh, remove a couple of screws from both devices, swap the backs, and I was able to use the battery from the previous generation to actually power the core too. Easy. And if you find a module or sensor that isn't using the stack footprint, the mentioned groove connector will let you simply just plug it in and start working with it. It's that simple. But what I really love about these devices is the ability to use UI Flow. UI Flow it's a web-based programming uh, development environment which you can use with any M5 stack devices. You won't need any wires because, well, for first this works on a battery and second, all the updates are going to be pushed over the air, which makes the programming seem like magic. Just push the button and the code will be magically transferred to a device, updated and you'll be testing your new iteration of software. It's so easy that the initial thermostat mock-up took me about two minutes, I didn't use any wires, and I didn't even write a single line of code. Is that easy? And since M5 Stack Core 2 comes with a touch interface, a new Interface options has been introduced to UI Flow, which makes it even more attractive right now because building interfaces, it's super simple. And as you can see, I took a little bit more time to actually start playing with it and seeing what is possible in UI Flow. And you have to admit that the results are pretty cool. I will have dedicated article and a video about what I've done in here because it still needs a little bit more connectivity, etc. But if you're interested in turning this into kind of a smart thermostat or smart um, control panel that you can use in any room you like, then you probably want to follow me right now. 
I know visual programming can be limiting, so at any given time you can simply jump into MicroPython itself and code directly from the browser, or if you don't like it at all and you want to go more traditional start with, uh, with ESP32, then you can still use Arduino IDE to program these boards and treat them like any other ESP32 boards. M5 stack actually also provides the library support for this, so if you want to go ahead and use the Arduino, you'll find in the library support uh, dedicated libraries for all the hardware that is included on individual boards, so nothing stops you from using different IDEs. M5 stack core is priced around $50, which is similar to the previous generation core devices. Now you are getting a touch interface, which could be an improvement to your projects, and because they have the same form factor, swapping it out is as simple as removing the previous unit and slotting one of these. It's so simple. So if you are looking for a development board to play, which is really cool, looks uh, consumer grade, and it has interesting ways of programming and trying things out, I would strongly recommend you one of the M5 stack products because they are simply awesome. I love it. Now, Below in the description of this video, you're gonna find a link to this device and a couple of other interesting M5 stack devices that I've covered in the past. So I would strongly recommend you to have a look and pick the one that is probably the best for your use case. Lastly, I'd like to thank M5 stack for sending me this. I could take a look and I would like to give a shout out to a M5 stack tough that has been released only a couple of days ago and it's an industrial toughened version of Core 2. So take a look. On my website, you'll find a dedicated article about it. I hope to get a hands-on on that as well. As for now, guys, if you are interested in that uh, thermostat template that I've created, once it's ready and has a couple of more features, I'm gonna make a video and dedicated article about it so you could try out for yourself and use it in your home automation. It's gonna definitely have a support for MQTT, so it's gonna be easy to plug it into uh, your home automation, um, home assistant or Node-RED. So for now, thanks so much for watching guys, and I'm definitely going to see you in the next video. You know how all that YouTube stuff and following works, so I'm not going to tell you. So okay, bye.